Okay, so what do you do if you're suffering with a loved one who's suffering with things like uh, mental health problems or something like that? Yeah, okay. Um, well, again, with something like that, for me, uh, it, it's to uh, transcend it. So you want to you want to transcend it. And for me, the thing with if, if they're suffering with problems or, <clears throat> or mental health problems that are a loved one then for me the thing is uh, one of the things I want to do is to transcend you know because if, if I'm being affected with them I want to control them to be something that uh, is, to be different to the way they are so uh, so I, I would uh, sit with my feelings any feelings that are coming up around that um, I would uh, go to the um, and my, my thing would be to, to go to the, to the witnesser. I mean, I, I might practice unconditional love with them, but it would be, it'd be to, to fully let go all my outcomes and expectations of that person. You know, you, my suffering comes, especially with loved ones, in things with like wanting to rescue them, wanting them to be different to the way they are, uh, wishing I could wave a magic wand at them, not letting uh, not letting their karma unfold the way God would have their karma unfold. So, so really, I'd be like, really like, and when I'm doing transcending work, um, I'm really trying to let go of how my ego identifies with the problem. So it's like, what is you know, like when I was with my mother, uh, you know, she passed away, and it was we had a great relationship, miraculous in the end, because I worked on transcending her for about five years, and so it then. The, relationship transformed into the miraculous, a very loving relationship. But, you know, it was like to fully let go so that there's nothing she could do, say, or, or behave that would trigger me in any way to, to have 100% transcendence. So you, just, you find out, you then investigate within your ego what are the things that you're hooking into? What are the things that you identify with? The things with me were like facial expressions, uh, her, 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 you know, uh, vo uh, voice tone, um, uh, also things which I perceived were criticism, you know, uh, choice of words. But all of these are actually, from if you're going into, realize that when you don't identify with something, you don't experience it. <clears throat> so I really, you know, so I could start to see what were the vested interests my ego had. Oh, my ego wanted her to behave this way, wanted to speak with this tone of voice, wanted to not use certain choices of words, <clears throat> wanted to, her to behave in a way that I wanted her to behave. So, you know, wanted her not to have all her problems that she had. So you totally re release all of those so that I, don't, I can't hook into any of those. So then come, and, and I was willing to do that. So I think having an attitude, one of the great things I had with uh, letting go of the what I perceived to be the problems with my mother was to be, um, was to having the intention for transcendence, which means that I, I don't want to have any more payoff out of her in any way whatsoever. So I want to be like, you know, my intention was that whatever I, whenever I go in there, I'm noticing what gets hooked in. You know, am I, well, did I get hooked in by the words, her, 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 her facial expression, or she didn't behave the way. So, and then, you know, if I'm going to the observer, <coughs> then, you know, every time I, I get, I, I connect in, or I hook into something, then I go to the witnesser of that, and then I, uh, and then I disidentify. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, I'll get the joke later on. Uh, you, you dis, you, Sorry. Oh. oh no, no, I can hear it. Yeah. Okay. So you just go to the um, you go. So you just each time I get hooked in and I go to the observer of it, I'm releasing that pattern of identification. It's going to have less of a hook the next time I go to the observer of that. And each time she does it again, if I go to the, if she has a funny facial expression, if I go to the witness of it, I release. You suddenly in the observer, you're not hook, hooked in. If you don't, if you don't go to the observer, you stay hooked in and it carries on being a pattern that hooks you in. So if you go to the witness of it, you unhook. But then next time she does it, you might hook in again. So you go into that, you unhook. And you unhook. Um, uh, with the, so then you can also use the Course of Miracles, pray for a miracle to see the loved one differently, 
instead of the situation to see peace, uh, you know, to place the person into God's hands. Um, and so the various things you can do to on them as God. Yeah, see them see as Christ. As Christ see, see them as Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of those things uh, will help from the Course of Miracles. Also sitting with feeling. You know, if you go in and they make a remark and you feel a lot of feelings coming up, you know, then go to my room and say, look, you know, uh, go to my room and take a break and just sit with those emotions and process them through mm -hmm. until those feelings are gone and then go back because it's like the loved one is like a great thing to empty out all your emotions you know because they'll keep pressing the button mm -hmm. and then you know oh, more feelings are coming up so then go to the room sit feel them out and go in also realize that I think doing you know if you have a loved one transcending them is one of the greatest gifts you can give them mm -hmm. because you know mm -hmm. we're all one so as I let go of wanting them to be different and wishing they, were, they weren't this way, I'm also giving them, as my level of consciousness increases, there's, there's going to be more light and there's going to be more love. And this is a, a ground for miracles to happen. Mm. Like I found, you know, when I did my transcendence work with my mother, um, I thought, you know, I wanted to transcend. So I thought she'd behave and say the same things to me over and over again and behave the same way, but... I'd be bulletproof, you know, I'd be bulletproof, you know, you can say, you can make any facial expression, use any words, do anything, and I'll still be in the observer, and it won't affect me, and it won't, know, it won't but, but actually I found that as you go into, as, you, as, you, as it's infected you, I've, and what I now realize is that your field of love increases, and if you radiate out love to someone for long enough, unconditional love, there's a great potentiality for them to actually change mm -hmm. you know because I wasn't reacting to all the things that she thought would you know there's a there's a field of testing oh this is interesting if you were like if you want to mm -hmm. like transcend someone or maintain unconditional love or not have them affect you like those people they always know your buttons mm -hmm. so uh, so you just keep doing it and they'll always like check to make sure you're not going to take the bait mm -hmm. you know like one of the things was okay I think I'll share it you know like uh, she was uh, the uh, she um, yeah she didn't like a particular American president at the time yeah you know <laughs> so so it would be like uh, and it's not the current one is it is another mm. one but anyway so you know and she knows she could pull me into a debate about that you know and get me like ruffled up so you know I had to stay in the observer and she would she would uh, do that thing just to see if she could pull me into the into a juicy debate. So I'd just like, you know, just stay in the witness or just sort of nod or not try to get engaged. And you should check you for a while. And then after a while, if you don't get hooked in, it's just, they stop, you know. But they test you for a while just to make sure that they can, they can get you. So you just have to keep doing that. And then what happens then is she became loving. So those are great things. It's just by not changing them and transcending it yourself, uh, you breed the... The grounds, of, and you know, for me, it's like the other thing to realize with a loved one is like. So what Saint Francis says, you know, is it's not to seek love but to be of love. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if I want someone to behave a certain way, to be different to the way they are, to give me affirmation, or just to even things like oh, I wish they would look after themselves and take, take you know, look look after their health and look after their well being. <coughs> And, and, you, and you wish you, you could force them to do the things that you think they should do to look after them. Even that is a control. So as you let those things go and just allow them to be who they are uh, and not want any payoff from them in any way, then, uh, then that, that is the miraculous. Also, it'll also clear, you'll also be a clearer guide uh, as to who you're meant to be. You'll get clearer intuitions of how to be in that situation and what's the right thing to do. So, you know, the observer, of course, the miracles, feeling the feelings. Um, and the deeper thing is, you know, just uh, ask your question, do you want to transcend them? You know, cause it, or do you want, or do you want to, ch to make them the way you want them to make them to be? You know, like, if I've got a loved one, I'd think, well, if only they change, then I'd have a loving relationship with them. Mm. You know, like if you took better care of your diabetes, you weren't in there. She was diabetic and she would eat sweet things, you know. So on a certain level, my ego might have said, well, you know, if you take my advice, I can help you how to stop, you know, killing yourself with sugar. But that's not, um, you know, that's like me wanting to control that, mm -hmm. you see. So all of these things come up, you know, that you want to, like, change them or do things. And you stay, 
That can also happen with the bus or, or careers or things mm. like that mm. as well. Mm. On the bus, I get so angry with people talking loud on their phone. I want to kill them. Yes. <laughs> it's got easier because I have been witnessing and I'm trying not to take it personally. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult sometimes. I know it's getting less. But I get into this mode of thinking, how dare they disturb my peace? Mm -hmm. I can't stop people talking, but I believe that I could at first. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult sometimes. It's very difficult. I mean, I've actually got, uh, and that's the one, the one in tube and things with noise and noisy people is the best one for me is the observer, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. that's the one to do because it's like, well, okay. So this person is like fidgeting or making a, you know, saying things. So what's observing, what's observing, yes. what's observing, what's, well, what's, you know, I'm getting hooked in. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. My ego, yeah. well, me as an ego is getting hooked in. My ego is not, is unhappy. So what's observing me? What's observing the me that's it's getting... consciousness, isn't it? Isn't no, it's yeah, it, well, it, it's not, not intellectual. It's no. like, take, take a reading. What's, what are the triggers in me? Oh. Uh, how do I experience the trigger of someone talking loudly? So be, become aware of the me that's getting triggered. And then go to the, the observer of the me. Be the witnesser of the me. Mm. So as I become the witnesser of the me that was triggered by the thing, so what's watching the me? So now that I'm the witnesser of me, now that I'm in the position of the witnesser, is this witnesser uh, triggered by the noise? And then it wouldn't be. Or if it is slightly triggered, then go to the witnesser of that witnesser, and that witnesser will not be triggered. So that's the quick way I, I do. And if you keep doing that, because stay in the witnesser. You, stay, yeah. you go to the witnesser or the attached witnesser. Because yeah. when you're in the ego, you're identifying. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're identifying. And so if you stay in the ego, you'll keep identifying. So you want to go to the observer of the ego. The observer of the ego is not interested in what's going on in the ego. Yeah. You know, and so it's the ego that's listening. So when you go to the witnesser of the ego, there's nothing listening. So then the noise starts to disappear. And that's how you let go of noise as well. So if, there's, if you're here experiencing any noise now, like uh, it's like something's listening to noise, then go to the observer of noise. And go to the observer of that observer. So as you go deeper into, you go into sort of a silent witnessing. Uh, and that, in that witnesser, there is no noise. You see, so you, you see every. You have to track something to experience it, and if you go to the witnesser of that, which doesn't track that which is being tracked, then that doesn't doesn't experience. So if you go to the witnesser of noise, mm. detachment and noise doesn't exist. Or if you go to the witnesser of time, time doesn't exist. If you go to the witnesser of location, well, location doesn't exist in the witnesser of location. Time doesn't exist in the witnesser of time. Uh, noise doesn't exist in the witnesser of noise, mm. you see. So all the things which create space, time, dimension, all of those things, they can only be experienced if there's identification. Mm. So when you go to a witnesser in, which does not identify uh, or that has no interest in identifying, then those things start to disappear or completely disappear. Um, is that similar to perceptual positioning? So when they say, like, you know, let's say you're having an argument with your loved one and you're completely in it. Yes. Um, let's say you're not, you know, awakened or oh, anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly you're having an argument and they say, just stand as an observer who has no emotions about the situation happening in front of you. What do you see? Well, it's kind you know, of better it's... understanding of what's going on. Is that similar? Is that connected? Or? Well, it, 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 I think, you know, you t if you're talking about perceptual positions from NLP, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're kind of using, uh, I mean, I think it would be helpful, but, you know, when you're going to the observer, you're going to, you, you're not, you're not, um, it's not like a, uh, it's not like a detached state of individual mm -hmm. consciousness, because the, the, the witnesser is, go you're, you're going to the observer of, of the ego. So the ego is not trying to do something like, let's try and pr be detached now or, or witness. You're going to um, the witnesser of the sense of I, the witnesser of the limited I. The whole, the whole idea that there is a limited I is that 
we're going to the observer of that. So we're not we're taking away the whole grounds that even a personal eye or a limited eye is even a real thing. So, you know, like when you go to therapy or NLP or something, they're like telling you to like visualize or imagine or do things. But you know, we're, we're the, the 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 observer is that is the observer of the imaginary, is the obser observer of pictures, is the observer of a limited eye trying to go to an observer but still existing. We're still going to the observer of that. So we're bypassing all existence to the, the idea that there is a limited or uh, an individual or a person that, that is in existence. Mm -hmm. So then, because a lot of the therapy things are still not touching that the limited eye is real. Mm -hmm. It's almost like giving you ideas as if the limited eye, you can, do, you can go to a different state or to an observer or a witness or a perceptual position, but still your eye is real. You know, but when you're doing self-inquiry, you're inquiring that the the eye that thinks it's real is not real. Mm -hmm. You're going to the observer of the sense of eye, mm -hmm. so you're dissolving the sense of eye. So I think I get it. <laughs> I think I get it now. After yeah. you explain, yeah. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. Can I ask you a quick question, Samir? Yeah. Um, is it okay? We're on camera. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. If you don't mind, yep. it's just about comparing feeling the feelings with being the observer yep. and mm -hmm. other. Did you ask that question already? No, no, oh, no, sorry, because no, I missed a bit. Nodding in approval. Yeah, yeah I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. when you're feeling the feelings, are you identifying with yourself in that moment to feel those feelings? Or that's a brilliant, that's a brilliant question. Yeah. 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 So, so the advanced tool, the observer and feel the feelings, all end up in the same place. Now, understand that. So, like I've been doing, uh, teaching feel the feelings. So, when you're doing feel the feelings, so it's like allowing feelings and letting go of thinking, identifying with thought, okay? But the thing is, like, in the early days when you were letting go of identifying with thoughts, you still have a, you'll still be feeling that there's a, there's a little I, there's a sense of a me there, and feelings are going on. But actually what you're doing is when you're letting go of identification with thought, you're letting go of the concept of a little I being there. You're starting to dissolve, because as you're allowing feelings to be experienced, without thought, because the whole basis of a me is identification with thought. You know, like, I should feel, am I feeling this right? Am I doing it properly? Or maybe I did it wrong. So that comes from thought. So there's the little I that stems from identifying with thought. So actually, as you stop identifying with thought, then what is feeling the feeling? Well, it's not your thinking that's feeling the feeling. Mm -hmm. So then eventually it's understood that it's consciousness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the infinite. So the feelings are allowed to be in the field of the infinite consciousness. And there's not the illusory idea that there's a little I that's trying to do the feeling is, 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 is vanishing. Because if you don't, as you're letting go of identifying with thoughts, then that is the basis of a little I existing. So, so then you're dissipating the idea that there is an I feeling the feeling, you see. Because you need to, you need to have... It's like an awareness, you know, for me, like the, the eye of the ego is like identifying with the field of thoughts in a plane, yeah? So if you don't, if you release that identification with the thoughts, then the feeling is just being allowed in consciousness in the universe. Mm -hmm. There isn't a feeler of the feeling, because you're dissolving that by not identifying with thought. So, so, yeah, the present. So there isn't an I that is feeling the feeling. It's just feeling is being allowed to be experienced okay. in the infinite. And it dissolves. And it dissolves, yes. Experience because yeah. that's right. Because in the beginning, you're thinking when you're letting when you're, you're thinking is much, you think that there's a thinker there who's trying to do the action. Mm -hmm. So you're dissolving the idea that there's even a person there who's feeling the feeling. Now, most people in the early days of feeling the feelings, they. Um, they th they're trying they have an unconscious thing that thinks it's trying to do run the show and do you know am I feeling it perfectly and maybe I'm not doing it perfectly maybe I don't quite understand so that's sort of going on in the background but eventually you have to dissolve that as well you don't want to identify with that thing mm. so then you're dissolving the idea that there is a person feeling the feeling so if you do that as you get more advanced at it you know there is no I that is feeling it's just the feelings just are allowed and they evaporate into a state of uh, universal infinite consciousness. So you, you get to the oneness or the limitless uh, experience of being. So that can happen with feel the feelings. Or if you're doing the witnesser, 
you, then you're just allowing the witnessing of, of thoughts and feelings just to arise without identifying and they'll start to evaporate off in that way and then you end up being in the infinite consciousness so both can lead you there or if you practice both methods you start to intuitively know you can become a mishmash you know at a certain point you might be more of this allowing of feelings and then there seems to be a witnessing of feelings and the feeling you know so it can just sort of spontaneously arise uh, and be orchestrated in uh, in that way um, so 